Hello, welcome to this session. Today we would be talking about the concept of ethnicity. How is ethnicity different from race and nationalism? We would be understanding where the major ethnicities are distributed, the major terms related to ethnicity, and the meaning and implications of the concept of ethnic cleansing and balkanization. Let's start with the concept of ethnicity and its differences from the uh, nationalism and race. So first is ethnic culture. When we talk about ethnic culture or ethnicity, what does it mean? We are talking about a group of population or a sect of people who are sharing common roots in terms of culture. I can say it can be religion, it can be race or any other parameter which is indirectly or directly related to the cultural aspect. So when the population is sharing any of such features which is common to that group of population, so it is known as ethnicity. The next term is race. Now how is race different from ethnicity? When I talk about race, I say it is a group of people sharing common genetic or biological ancestry. So here, the main concept is it's a biological inheritance and here it is a cultural inheritance. So this is the primary difference between the term ethnicity and race. Most of the students get confused with this concept a lot. Now there is a next term which is known as nationality. What is nationality? If I say if I belong to this ethnic group, Will I be a national of, uh, will I follow that nationality? Is it a correct statement? I can say it's definitely an incorrect statement because nationality is a further different con concept where I say it is a group of people or a population that is sharing common legal attachments. So if I am legally endowed to some country or some territory, that is what is nationality. So I have my personal elegance to that country and that is what is nationality. So this is the primary concept of ethnicity, race and nationality. Now before we go further into the concept of ethnicity, let's understand few primary terms that are related to the concept of ethnicity. The first is the concept of ethnocentrism. Ethnocentrism is a concept mainly used in philosophical constructs. And this concept talks about the superiority one believes about one's ethnic group. So if I belong to supposedly say an ethnic group A and one of my colleagues belong to ethnic group B, I believe in all cases the ethnic group A is superior to the group B. That means I am an uh, ethnocentric towards the ethnic population of A. So that is what is ethnocentrism, where I have a predominantly predominant belief that my group is superior to the another sect or another group of population. The next term we must know here is ethnic island. What does the word ethnic island mean and how is it different from ethnic enclaves? There is a minor difference between the two, but there is definitely a significant difference because these two terms are not similar which most of the candidates get confused with. So let's first understand what is ethnic island. So ethnic island is a basically I have a huge set of population here. So this is the whole city of New York or any big city, uh, any big urban area. And within that urban area, I have a minority cultural group which is distributed in the region and that is known as ethnic island. So the classic example of ethnic islands are Germans located in South Central Texas. This, that is the most popular ethnic island example we can do. And second is a lot of Scottish people from Scotland and Ireland, so Scottish Irish people living in the Appalachian mountain zone. So these are the two classic examples of ethnic identity. Now let's understand the next concept that is ethnic enclave. What is enclave? 
So when they talk about ethnic enclaves, it's a small area of the city that is inhabited uh, by the minority group. For example, you must have heard of Chinatown. So what is Chinatown? Chinatown is predominantly a region uh, dominated by Chinese people. So within the city. So like all the cities, most of the cities would have a Chinatown. So that is what is an ethnic enclave. So they try to preserve their identity or ethnicity within that region. Uh, similarly, similar to China Island, you have uh, China Town, you have Polish Hills, and then you have Little Saguenay. So these are some of the examples of ethnic enclaves. Now we have talked about ethnic enclave. We have talked about ethnic islands. What is ghettos? That's a similar term you might have heard off and on. But what is ghetto? Ghetto is a kind of ethnic enclave. But in ghettos, people are usually forced to live in that region. So it can be of two types. Either they are forced or it is voluntary. But in either case, it is a total segregation. And these ghettos are usually demarcated based on race or religion. So this is the primary reason for demarcating any ghetto is race or religion. Now, there was a famous geographer who worked in this concept is Zelensky. Zelensky said that whenever any ethnic group enters into a country or any new territory, it tries to establish a first effective settlement. That first effective settlement I can say is known as the charter group or the charter population and this charter population tries to establish the new concepts, new ideas and new uh, philosophy of their ethnicity. So a classic example is uh, when migration in US took place, US was basically predominantly by Native Americans. So when people from England, Ireland, Scotland, these were the first settlers in US. So people from England, Scotland and Ireland moved into. What happened was this region was uh, the first to be charter, uh, first where the charter group came to establish. And this whole concept was given by Zelensky, which is a very important concept to understand ethnicity. Now, when we talk about ethnicity, why ethnicities are demarcated and basically what happens based on demarcation. So when I talk about ethnicity, what the predominant population does here is tries to clean it out. So if I am located in a city A, for example, what I will be doing is I will be trying to remove all other ethnicities from that region. And this phenomena is known as ethnic cleansing. So ethnic cleansing is basically removing of one ethnic group by another group. So that is what is ethnic cleansing. Now if we talk about ethnic cleansing, a similar concept is balkanization. Balkanization is an important concept that is recently being used. Now let's first understand the concept of balkanization. Balkan states is a region surrounding between uh, Russia and Asia. So it's basically Russia, Europe and Asia. So this area is basically a small geographical area which was not able to organize due to uh, instability in the region and due to a huge number of ethnic diversity. So what happened when the demarcation took place, what people did was they put all the people who were from varied ethnic background into this region and they called this area as balkanized. And since this Balkan area became the center for a kind of uh, uh, a group of different ethnicity, there was a term known as balkanization which became popular and wherever there was there comes up to be a group of ethnic population which is which cannot lead to a stable state, we call it balkanization. So this term became popular only after the first and the second world war where Balkan states became prominent. 
in South Russia. So next is the term we need to understand is genocide. What is genocide? Genocide is basically a large scale killing of one ethnic group. Genocide became a major issue of concern during World War II when Nazis attacked Jews and they tried to wipe out the population of Jews. This was one of the important cases of genocide. The other recent cases is in 1994 there was a conflict in Rwanda in Africa between Tustis and Hutus. So there was the next case was in Sistan, in the region of Darfur. Here, a Muslim dominated sect known as Janjava, Janjaweed, they tried to eliminate all the Christians and animists. Animists are the people who um, follow some objects. So, they, are, uh, they consider any object of a specific kind and they try to uh, preach those objects. So this is what is the difference between, uh, this is what is animist. So Western Sudan is another case of genocide. Now we have talked about ethnicity, race, nationalism. We need to understand where are the basic ethnicities located. So let's move out to the classic example of United States of America to understand the distribution of ethnicity. If I classically talk about the distribution of ethnicity, I can say African Americans contribute about 13% of the total population, located mainly in the southeast states of Alabama, Georgia, then you have Louisiana, where the recent riots are being taking place, and then you have South Carolina. The next is the uh, Hispanics or Latinos, which constitute 11%. So the Spanish speaking people, mainly from Mexico, were known as Hispanic, but later on, this term was considered as derogatory, and now the term used officially in US as Latinos, which uh, point out the Latin American population. So this contribute to about 11% of the total population in the United States, mainly attributed in the south southwest regions of California and Texas, predominantly California and Texas. Then you have the Asian Americans. Asian Americans contribute to around 4% mainly located in the western regions. Of these 4%, I can classify 25% as Chinese, 20% as Filipinos, and the remaining 12% as Japanese or Vietnamese. The next set of ethnic population is the American Indians, contributing to merely 1%, of the total population, mainly located in the southwest region and the plains. Now there is a difference. When there is an ethnic group that we are talking about, there are various stages of migration. They uh, try to enter into the country. Let's take the example of African Americans. So African Americans, when they first came into the United States, so they came into the United States by three means. The first was during the 18th century when they migrated into as slaves and this was a kind of forced migration. This st stage was migration to the north. As we can see, I said African Americans are mainly um, concentrated in the southeast regions. So they, what they tried to do was they slowly tried to migrate to the northern cities in search of jobs and other opportunities. And this became a prominent factor in the first half of the 20th century. And finally what happened was there was a further migration from ghettos, what we 
understood recently to the urban centers. And this migration is a kind of very recent phenomena and it took place in the second half of the 20th century. So these are the main, uh, here we can understand the distribution of ethnicity and how they usually migrated and moved into the country. Now, we talked about race. So we'll I will be briefly discussing what is race. So race as we can as we know is broadly classified into Mongolites, Caucasians, and Austrians. But the, uh, I'm not talking about the classification here. What we are trying to understand is uh, the discriminations based on races. So we, the discrimination based on race is what is known as racism. There were various laws and doctrines that were incorporated. So the first was separate but equal doctrine. What does it stand for? Separate but equal doctrine talks about giving equal opportunities to blacks and whites but separately. So for example, if there is a train running, blacks and whites, there would be a different train but you would be providing train to both but there would be different rain for whites and different rain for blacks. This doctrine was laid down by the United States in 1896 and, and the Supreme Court of the United States gave this decision under the Plessy versus Ferguson case. Later on, what happened was slowly and gradually this doctrine was uh, abolished from the system. Similar to this doctrine, there was the concept of apartheid. That's the most common and most heard of. So it was basically physical separation of races. So Nelson Mandela was one of the more one of the main person in South Africa who fought apartheid. This concept started in 1652 with whites coming in from Holland. So the people of Holland tried to establish themselves as superior and tried to separate races and regions. Indeed, after a lot of efforts being taken up, in 1991, the concept of apartheid was repealed. But still, there are traces of this apartheid lying into the country. You won't believe an average income of white in South Africa is 10 times higher than blacks. So this is what is the strain of this racism is still existing. So basically here we are trying to understand how racism and ethnicity are creating boundaries between the region and how they are trying to discriminate and demarcate people. So we have understood the basics of what is ethnicity and what is racism, the differences, the major distribution and the pattern of migration by which they moved into a country. We will be talking more about religion and cultural geography in the coming sessions. Hope you enjoyed this session. Have a good day.